Welcome to the Bringing the Human Back to Human Resources podcast, the podcast all about the delicate balance between people and business, and quite literally, reconnecting the two. My name is Tracy Rubin, and I've spent nearly my entire professional career in HR. Join me as I share stories, opinions, and words of advice with you each week. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me. If you are not someone who can listen to stories about loss, grief, or death, this is a trigger warning. So it is totally okay if you can't listen to this week's episode. I will see you next week. Sorry about having to start the episode off on a more somber note, but that is, you know, the reality some people can't and and won't, um, you know, react well to stories or discussions on those topics. So I've added trigger warnings in the past. This is definitely an episode that is probably going to be a little bit hard for me to get through. Um, So I'm just going to cut right to the chase. I lost my grandmother last week. She unfortunately passed away on the 19th of August. I feel like this is almost a time capsule because, as you know, I don't really choose to record episodes too far in advance because I feel like as things come out in the news and and throughout like the week, I like to make sure that my podcast is relevant to those things. So certainly I do record some things in advance, um, but this one obviously not so far in advance. This is like a real time in the middle of my grief uh, like morning period, I am recording this episode. And I didn't, I wasn't sure whether or not I should even put an episode out for this week because of the way I've been feeling. But, you know, I'm a woman of my word and I stay committed. And I'd rather put out something short and sweet um, than completely skip a week and not communicate that. So, here we are. Uh, my grandmother, I'd like to tell, I guess, a little bit of a story about my grandma before I tie it back to anything related to HR or the workplace and the reason why you listen to my podcast. Um, but my grandma was 94. She was going to be 95 um, only about a month after our wedding. And she was amazing. This is my paternal grandmother. My maternal grandmother is, thank goodness, still alive. She's also, uh, she's 95. So I've been very blessed to have longevity, but also to have a lot of time with my, the more senior members of my family. And anyway, my paternal grandma, she was amazing. She never complained. She never judged anyone. She always had candy at her house. (laughs) She always took us to lunch, and we always did such fun things. And I just, you know, I'm really going to miss her. And one of my favorite things to think about when I think about my grandma is her laugh and the humor that she brought to life and every situation. Um, Fortunately, I did have an opportunity to speak at her funeral on Friday, the 20th. And that was really cathartic. It was really cathartic. So I'm feeling, as I'm recording this, I'm actually feeling okay, which I'm kind of surprised by because I've been having a very difficult few days, um, as all of my family can relate to. We've all struggled these last few days. I mean, my grandma was the matriarch of our family. All she cared about was her family and was... Uh, our happiness and she always said that our happiness came first and that we deserve all of the happiness in the world and so I'm happy that I'm able to talk about her in a way that in 10 years from now I can go on to Spotify or Apple or my own computer and listen back to this episode and think about how I felt in this moment reminiscing on the good times Um, so This episode today is not going to remain too somber. I hope to kind of bring it back to all of you as the listeners of this podcast. It means a lot to me that I'm able to share this information with you in this story, but I also want to make sure that I'm giving you some takeaways, something that you can literally take back with you 
and hopefully will make a positive impact on your experience, not only as a human being, but an employee in your space of work, in your place of work. Um, so, you know, as I, as I said, the loss of my grandma has been very difficult. Um, but one of the things that has really opened my eyes and had, has made a huge impact on my ability to mourn her loss, it has been how my, my supervisor and my coworkers have, have really been there for me. Um, through this through this period of time. And I am the kind of person, and I'm sure I'm not alone because my dad is the same way. Uh, I'm the kind of person that prefers to remain productive and, and to do something because it's just an easier way to almost cope. So I did work the day my grandma died, not because I had to, but because I wanted to. And it wasn't exactly the most productive day but it helped me to almost sift through my feelings and the, all of the emotions that come with loss. And so I, you know, I really appreciate not only my, my supervisor giving me that space and grace, as you all know, I love to say space and grace, um, but also my coworkers who really were like, listen, you know, we're here for you or take the time you need. Don't worry about having this meeting with us. But I think the commitment that I feel toward my coworkers and my business takes me, it gives me something to focus on in a moment where it's so hard to focus on anything other than the grief and sadness and anger that you feel, especially when you're close to someone. And for us, it was definitely pretty fast. It was kind of sudden even though she was closer to 100 than she was to 80. I mean, it it felt like not only such a quick, you know, change in life to death, but it, oh, I, I've been describing it as like highway robbery because she was fully mentally and cognitively functioning. Um, and so, yeah, it just feels like we all know that we're on borrowed time. That's like how life works. But it just it felt like we were robbed of of the time that we were looking forward to. And actually, the hardest part about all of this, I realize I'm venting here. I'm going to move on in a second. The hardest part about all of this is that I'm getting married in less than 50 days. And I'm like, couldn't she just wait a little bit? <laughs> couldn't she wait 50 days? So we had those pictures with her. But all of my friends and family are saying all of the right things that actually, you know, when it's our time, it's our time. And she'll be there in a different way. And thankfully, I had my bridal shower only a few weeks ago. And we have those amazing pictures. And she was able to be there. And that was really special because actually it was the first time we were all together as a family um, since 2019 because of the pandemic. So that was really special. And I am really grateful that we had those, we, that we have those memories to look back on. So end rant. Um, this seals the time capsule of my uh, stories and reflection on my own grieving process. And actually, what I will say is that I have been fortunate to, like I said, have had the senior members of my family around for a very long time. Um, I haven't really had to deal with this in many, many years, and I'm grateful for that. And I certainly realize that not everyone can say the same. So you know, that's not lost on me. Anyway, like I was saying before, a big part of my ability to um, kind of live in this grieving process has been the um, understanding and flexibility at work. And the day of my grandma's funeral was actually the day I was supposed to have my first wedding dress fitting. And so I had to move it. And it's like, this has been a, honestly one of the hardest parts of the wedding planning experience because everything kind of feels heavier than it. Like it, it, it doesn't feel as uh, sunshiny, but I know that it's a process and the wedding is going to be the best day of my life. So, you know, I'll get there, but it's definitely been hard. So I have, being in, a, in an environment where my coworkers and my supervisor, the people I work with are understanding and 
um, are sending their condolences. That's really, really special to me. And I, it's not lost on me that, you know, I'm being given that space and grace, as I always say. And what I hope to give to all of you as listeners who I'm sure have experienced your own um, waves of grief and mourning throughout your lives um, and experiences with life and death. What I will say is that, especially since we are still fighting this pandemic, um, it might sound like, I don't know, cliche, but don't take anything for granted, you know? Live every day like it's your last and be appreciative of the time that you have. And, you know, something that I have learned over this last year for sure is that, you know, wishing that we did something differently or wishing that we, you know, had reacted differently or called more or were around more, whatever it is in our personal lives that we might feel guilt over or sadness over, you know, those aren't the memories that should take up the majority of your time and energy because the things that add joy to our lives, those are the things that we all will remember most. And that that's the stuff. That's the that's where the magic happens. That's the stuff we should hold on to and invest all of our energy into so that we don't forget it. Um, and that's definitely been a process for me because I naturally gravitate toward a guilty conscience. <laughs> and for whatever reason, I'm working on it. But that has been a big growth moment for me throughout this morning period. Um, so I hope that that helps you in some ways. It certainly helped me when I realized that, that it's like, oh, why am I going to dedicate all of this energy to things that actually didn't even take up a, a percentage point of my time with my, with my grandma? Like there's so many amazing things that I can reminisce on and think about. So that's the first thing. The second thing is there's been a lot of discussion in my household around bereavement time and whether companies provide bereavement leave or how that works. And it came up really because my sister wasn't sure if she had bereavement. And I was like, even if you don't, like you'll use whatever time you have, but you know, every single human being that we interact with has or will experience some type some type of loss in their lifetime and if they can't understand or or be supportive of the need for you to have time off or whatever that looks like whatever because people cope in so many different ways then you know there's a there's a bigger discussion to have there and it made me think about covid honestly where so many people did lose um, loved ones and, and did struggle with uh, the realities of mortality. And I think we're all still going through those conundrums because we are confronted with mortality every single day, not only because of COVID cases, but because of death numbers, deaths reported, I should say, every single day. And there are certain parts of the country that are worse than others. And it's just, it's rough to listen to that every day and to watch that unfold every day. Um, and so being confronted with mortality every single day, I mean, that's not an easy thing to experience. And so my point here is that we all can relate in some way to needing time to grieve or to just chill and decompress, whatever that looks like. So um, I my stages of grief, I'll go through my stages of grief, I guess, over the last few days. Thursday was like shock and disbelief. Friday was like a deep sadness. Saturday was also a, a deep sadness, but in some ways it was like a a reconciliation of the reality, like understanding that, okay, this is this is it. There's no, there's no changing reality. And I think that certainly was, um, emphasized by needing to go to like our wedding venue and, you know, realizing that she wouldn't be there. And so acknowledging the reality and accepting it, that was Saturday. Sunday was sheer anger. <laughs> I'll share a story. My sister and I went to Costco on Sunday 
and I was angry at everybody. I mean, I didn't, I didn't talk to anyone because I knew that I was angry at everybody, but I mean, literally, if someone even said hello to me, I probably would have been angry at them. I, I was just angry, you know? And then Monday, uh, today, actually, it's when I'm recording it, I just am, I feel like I'm in a blur. I, it was hard for me to wake up. I mean, you can hear in my voice. I feel, I just feel exhausted. Um, but I did work out. And so maybe I'm at a point in this process where I'm forcing myself to feel like myself again because I didn't put that pressure on myself the last few days. So, yeah, I don't know. That's where I'm at. Um, for any of you who maybe are experiencing this yourselves or have recently come out of a grieving process, Ooh, I forgot in some ways what this was like, but I am here for you. If, if you need to, you know, talk or reach out or anything, send me a voice note on Instagram, message me, you know, I'm an open door. I'd love to hear your stories of nostalgia. I think it helps sometimes to share the fun stuff, um, because that's at least like as a, as a Jewish person, we have shivas and shivas are a seven day long mourning period where you have visitors and people bring you food. And it's like, a, it's an opportunity to celebrate life of the, or the life of the person who's passed. And so shivas are never too sad. I mean, they're certainly somber, but the stories that are shared are stories that are uplifting and happy and certainly there are there is sadness like I said but it's actually a, it's been a very helpful way to um, look ahead and be glad and grateful for the time that we did have together so thank you for letting me share those stories with you and my experience with you I feel like when I listen back to this I'm just gonna be like oh I ranted I vented the whole time but I do think there, at least from the um, the feedback that you all have sent or have shared with me over the last 43, 44 weeks at this point, I guess it's 43. Am I even on the right count? 43. You see, I'm not myself. 43 weeks. I know that in sharing my personal stories, that it helps you in some way. So if you did decide to continue listening to this, I hope that there was something, some nugget of information there that helped. And if not, I'm really sorry. Uh, next week, I look forward to being my usual self, ready to go to share some exciting information about how we can bring the human back to human resources. But actually, what I will say as a mental note, I'm going on record here, um, I really would love to come back to the vaccine conversation because uh, there have been so many changes in my opinion on this on this uh, side of things from the last time I talked about it and I really want to talk about it again and actually going on record again here the FDA just approved the Pfizer vaccine so there's a lot to talk about. I think next week we will probably even see more FDA approvals. There's going to be a lot to talk about on the vaccine front. So I definitely want to, um, you know, update you on how my opinion has changed on employee vaccinated status and like v employers requiring vaccines because I have definitely developed um, my opinions here. And I think it's a it's just, I've come full circle. So with that, I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity to share, you know, my personal story and what I'm currently experiencing and going through and dealing with. And I hope that if you are going through something similar or recently went through something similar, that you're doing okay and that you remember this is a process. It won't always feel this way. We will be back to feeling our usual selves hopefully soon. And if you need any support, if you need any resources, please don't hesitate to reach out. My links are all in the episode show notes. So connect with me and I look forward to speaking with you all next week. Have a great week and thank you again.